Wednesday night Bible study, February, February the 8th, Bible study tonight, look how fast this month is going, we are so grateful, we're thankful that we're here in the house, in the sanctuary, for Bible study with Victory Word and our Word family. So come on in, take your shoes off, get relaxed, and let's dig into the Word of God. Amen. Come on, y'all. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. It's another good day to have a God day. Amen. Amen. Well, victory word, let us pray. Most gracious Father, we come before you first and foremost tonight saying thank you. Thank you for this Wednesday night Bible study, Lord. Lord, thank you for your traveling mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your covering. Thank you, Lord, that no hurt, harm, or danger has befalled us. And so tonight, Father, illuminate us. Illuminate our minds so that we can hear a word from you. So Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, for you are my strength and my redeemer. And it is so, in Jesus' name. Victory Word, Word family, what's up? How you doing tonight? It's another good night. We thank God, we thank God, we praise and we worship him for all that he has done, all that he's doing, all that he's going to do. And we are just grateful for his presence, his presence in the sanctuary and his presence in us. So turn with me to the book of Isaiah 26 chapter, the third verse, I'm reading from the Amplified uh, Translation. And the Word of God says, you will keep in perfect and constant peace the one whose mind is steadfast, that is committed and focused on you in both inclination and character because he trusts and takes refuge in you with hope and confident expectation. And now we're going to go to Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses one and six. Therefore, my brother, whom I love and yearn to see, my delight and crown, wreath of victory, thus stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything by prayer and petition, definite requests with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. Victor Word, Word family tonight, 
I want to teach from this sermon topic or from this biblical uh, Bible study topic. I want to teach you or ask the question, am I focused? Am I focused? Are you focused tonight? Second month of the, of the new year. And we have to ask ourselves, are we still focused, razor sharp focused, as we were January 1? You have to ask yourself that question. What am I focusing on? And, and am I focused? Got a question to ask you. Have you ever met someone who thought they were so educated beyond their intelligence? knew everything but how to fulfill their own purpose in life. People who think they know more than they do or that they always have the right answers no matter what. I've met, I've met my share of church folk who felt they're more spiritually mature, advanced beyond all other believers. I know that somewhere in the Bible there's a verse or verses concerning patting oneself on the back and being deceitfully prideful. I've had conversations with, with know-it-all church folk who said, who said the word focus is not in the King James Bible. And I hurry up and said that, that, that the word focus is in the Amplified, it's in the Message, and the New Living Translation. But the know-everything person said that might be true but it ain't in the King James Bible. And I pointed out that while the word focus is not in the King James Version, what it means is, I get so tired of super saved folks. Got all the degrees, but don't know room temperature. Victory word, whatever we focus our attention on, is what will dominate our thoughts. Whatever you have your focus on, that's what dominates your thoughts on a regular basis. Proverbs 23, 7 in the King James Bible says it this way. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. What are you thinking? Well, however you see yourself, that's, how you, that's, that's who you are. How you see yourself. Verse 7 in the Living Bible says, if you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will keep your thoughts and your heart quiet and at rest as you trust in Christ Jesus. And in the eighth verse in the Amplified Bible, it says this, for the rest, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence and is honorable and seemingly Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if there is any virtue and excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on and weigh and take account of these things. Fix your minds on them. In other words, stay focused. With all the distractions of our electronic and technical age. We can easily spend valuable time, energy, and resources on things that have nothing to do with our dreams, goals, or vision. And that is what is called simply wasting time on things that won't change the quality or direction of your life, otherwise known as Losing focus. You can't have your mind on trivial things and think you're going to be successful. It just doesn't work that way. You have to keep your eyes stayed on the prize in the direction that God has called you to, to focus on or to focus in. You cannot listen to have a lot of chatter around you that, that defocus you from doing that which God has called you to do. 
See, the first example of losing focus appears in Genesis, the third chapter, first to the third verses. And it says this. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. What happened in this text? We see the enemy broke Eve's focus by distorting the truth. As far as we are told through scripture, God didn't say neither shall you touch it lest you, lest you die. He merely said don't eat it. Because the enemy broke Eve's focus on God's instructions, she was distracted from the truth. How many times have we been distracted from the truth and as a result of the distraction lost our focus? Of course, we need to first know the truth of the word. Genesis 3, 4 through 6 says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat therefore, thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Once again, the serpent breaks Eve's focus when he said, ye shall not surely die. Eve was distracted by the fact that the tree was good for food. She was distracted because the tree was pleasant to look at, Eve did more than bite into what was forbidden. She bit into the devil's assertion that the fruit of the tree would make one wise, even wise as God. So she bought into the enemy's word. Victory word, word family, what are you buying into? I pray that you're buying into the word of God and not listening to other people who don't even spend a tenth of their time even reading the word of God. We listen to so many people. We get so caught up in, in other things that we lose out on what God has for us listening to someone else who don't even have our, our heart. Or they don't even have enough in them for themselves. So if they don't have enough God in them to help them do what they need to do, how are you listening? Why are you listening to someone who don't have enough in their own self to keep them going in the path that God would have them to go. The Lord describes this age-old trick of the enemy in 1 John 2.16 in the NIV translation. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The progression is easy to see. Eve lusted after something she didn't have. She saw its attractiveness with her own eyes, and she wanted to be as smart as God. That is classic deception. We will never we can have the mind of Christ, but we will never be as smart as God. His, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His, his, his ways are not our ways. And the more and more that you get in him, the more you become like him, you still will never be to the, to the, ex, to the extent of who he is. He, the, the, the old saints used to sing a song that, that he's so high that you can't go over him. He, he's so wide that you can't go around him. He's so low you can't go under him. You got to come in at the door. That's the only way. You have to come in at the door. We need to remember that no one, hear me good right here, Victory Word. No one can give us something that is beyond God's ability to give to us. I'm going to say that again. 
we need to remember that no one can give us something that is beyond God's ability, ability to give to us. Whatever the world can offer us, God can give us greater and better. Did you hear what I said? God can give us what, whatever the world has to offer. God, his stuff is better. Whatever it is, his is much better. Because with God's property, there's peace with it. There's joy with it. There's happiness with it. When God decided to flood the earth, he gave very specific directions to Noah, who stayed focused on the specifics God gave him. I'm asking you tonight, are you being focused on the specifics God gave you? As Noah worked faithfully, there were those who came and inquired what he was doing. Whenever God gives you an assignment, hear me. Whenever God gives you an assignment, there will always be those who come along to distract you from your vision. Yeah, yeah. Whenever God has his hands on you, there's always going to be something or someone that tries to get you defocused off of the assignment. And I need you to remember this. If we lose our focus, we have given the enemy an enormous advantage over us. If we lose focus, then we go negative by speaking doubt and unbelief. In life, word family, we either live by faith or we live by fear, but not both. You can't say you trust God and you're fearing all the things around you, your, your environment. I'm worried about this, worried about that. No, no, either, either, either you're going to have faith that he'll do just what he said he will do. Or you're going to fear and allow the carnal man to have control over the spiritual man. And as we, being kingdom citizens, living by a kingdom system, there's no way that fear should be even in our vocabulary. The only part of fear is where the word of God says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. That's the only fear that we should have, and that is the fear of the Lord. Here's a, here's a New Testament example of people losing focus. In Acts, the third chapter, uh, the second through the fourth verse, in the, in the Amplified translation, it says, When a certain man crippled from his birth was being carried along, who was laid each day at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, so that he might beg for charitable gifts from those who entered the temple. So when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them to give him a gift. And Peter direct his, directed his gaze intently at him, and so did John, and said, look at us. Look at us. Now that may seem like a strange thing for Peter to say, look at us, or as the King James Version says, look on us. Why did Peter say this? Because the man was obviously looking at them. But Peter wanted to redirect this man's focus from the money to their words. Because the man's miracle would manifest through the word. See, your miracle is through the word, kingdom citizen. It's through the word that we speak. We speak those things that be not as though they are because my miracle is in what I'm saying. So I'm in covenant with my words. That's why I have to be accountable for every idle word that cometh out of my mouth. So I cannot be in covenant with things that does not pertain to God. So even though I'm going through situations and circumstances, I'm going through, but I'm not through going. I'm not allowing that situation to go through me. I may have to go through the circumstance or the situation or the challenge, but I'm not allowing it to penetrate me because I'm staying focused on what? God's word. Distractions. No, let me. 
because the man's miracle would manifest through the word. As the man focused his faith on Peter's words, something supernaturally happened. Peter took the man by the hand and he stood him on his feet. The man instantly went from being a lame beggar to a healed worship leader. I like that part right there. He went from a, a lame beggar to a healed worship leader because of his, go ahead and say it, focus. His focus. He got, he, he focused, he came out of himself from being a beggar looking for money and God blessed him with a miracle. Distractions will come in life, but when we get distracted, we break our focus and in so doing can easily forget what the word of God reveals is ours. Sometimes when you get distracted, you forget the word says that I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. But as a kingdom minded citizen, even in your condition, even though you're going through Whatever it is you're going through, your condition does not dictate your position in Christ. And we have to remember that. Yeah, I may not have everything, but I have everything. I'll say that again. I may not have everything, but I have everything. When I have the Lord Jesus the Christ spirit in me, I have everything I need. I just have to stay focused and in remembrance of God's word. Proverbs 4, 25, 26. I'm still reading out of the Amplified. It says, let your eyes look right on with fixed purpose and let your gaze be straight before you. Consider well the path of your feet. And let all your ways be established and ordered aright. The 27th verse, it says, don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. No matter how long it takes, hold fast to the word and your confession of faith because God will not fail or disappoint you. There's a song that says, he may not come when you want, but he's right on time. We have to just be patient, be mature to know that God is on his way. Whatever he said, I got to trust and believe him. I can't get sidetracked. Let my, I have to let my gaze be straight before him. And I have to let my, my, my feet my path be established by him. I like this scripture, Numbers 23, 19. It says, God is not a man that he should tell or act a lie. Neither the son of man that he should feel repentance or compunction for what he has promised. Has he said and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? Man, if God said it, that's it. God's not going to lie. If he said that he will take care of you, he'll make crooked places straight, he'll do it. You got to trust and believe he'll do it. And you have to do, you have to play your part in it by being obedient to what he said. See, what God has promised us will come to pass when we keep focused on the word. However, if we allow the enemy to break our focus off the word, then we will begin to sink. Sink into what? Our own trouble, our own frustration, our own negative thinking. Why? Because we have let our focus be broken. I got, I, got, I got another scripture for you. Matthew 14, 28 through 31. This is at the NLT. It says this. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it is really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Y'all remember the story. You remember. 
He said, and Jesus, yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? There's several observations about Peter's walking on water experience that I want to touch just, just for a few more moments. Actually, this, this is so good. We're going to have to do this in two parts, all right? So this is part one. First, the scripture says Peter went over to the side of the boat. This was not no rowboat or some little, 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 this was a real boat, a big boat. And Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water. As long as Peter was looking, watch this. As long as Peter was looking to the word, he didn't sink. Woo! He was looking to the word. Jesus, the word made flesh. And dwelt among us. That's what the Bible tells us. Jesus became the word. And walked among us. So Peter is doing what? He asked Jesus. If that's you. let me Bid me to come. And he said come on. And he's walking on the water. Because what? He's focused on the word. Victory word. That felt. I, I, I almost want to shout. I got a little goosebumps on that. I can preach it, but I'm just teaching tonight. What word are you focusing on? What 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 are you focusing on? When Peter allowed the circumstances to distract his focus from Jesus, he began to sink. When he was moved by the wind and the waves, he was no longer focused on Jesus. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what circumstances and situations are going on right now in your life that have you focused on something other, something else other than God? Is it is it your finances? Is it your health? Is it whatever it is that the enemy has tried to try to deceive you with by telling you, oh, you sick, so you can't be of God. Oh, you don't have this and you don't have that. And I'm telling you not to lose your focus on who you are, whose you are, and don't lose your focus on the word of God. When he was moved by the wind and the waves, he was no longer focused on Jesus. When we allow distractions to break our focus, we become terrified. We get, we get scared. When, we, when, when things happen around us, uh, uh, things, we, we get nervous. But that's why you can't allow distractions to be your focus. Let's go a little further as we unpack seven things that happen when, when we become distracted and our focus is broken. Oh, man, I'm, I'm running out of time. So this, we're going to get to, first. When we get distracted and, and our focus is broken, first we fall to victims. We fall victim to our circumstances when we were destined to be victorious over them. That's what happens when we get distracted. If you feel overwhelmed by what's happening around you, the turbulence of life, take comfort in Isaiah 41.10 in the Message Bible, which says, don't panic. I'm with you. There's no need to fear, for I'm your God I'll give you strength. I'll help you. I'll hold you steady. Keep a firm grip, and I'll keep a firm grip on you. In other words, God's got you when nobody else had, when nobody else can. He has a hold on you. Make your word, word, family. Hold on, as the saint says, to God's unchanging hand. Keep your focus tight. Keep your vision straight and let God fight your battles and you just stand still. Stay focused. The question tonight is, am I focused? I got some more, but look, time won't allow us, time won't allow us tonight. 
It's getting good. I know it was getting good to you. I know. But tune in. Tune in the rest of this month. We're going to pick up on this when I come back to you. Part two from the uh, the title, Am I Focused? I guess, I, not guess, when, when I come back in part two, the question will be, am I focused enough? All right? Amen. I'm praying that you just stay on the edge of your seat. Amen. Amen. I look forward to seeing you this coming Sunday, second Sunday, here in the sanctuary. Amen. 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 If there's one who would like to give their life to Christ, this is your opportunity. Lord, just pray this little prayer with me. Lord, I'm a sinner. I repent of my sin. I accept the Lord Jesus the Christ as my Lord and Savior. I want to walk in purpose. I want to be a mirror of a mirror image of him in the earth. And if you prayed that prayer, that's all it took for you to get reconciled to, the, to your creator. I want you to join a Bible-based church that will teach you the realities of serving a true and living God. And if that church is the Victory Word Church, we are a judgment-free zone. We don't beat you up. We pick you up. We watch God lift you up. If you'd like to be a part of our ministry, just call the church office at 313-243-4512. You'll be glad you did. Amen. Amen. Well, if there's one that would like to sow a seed tonight into, into this ministry, or members pay your tithes, your offering, give your first fruit offering. It's on the screen on ways to give. You can give by Givelify, by PayPal, or go to our, our website, victorywordchurch.org, hit the giving button, and we'll be glad to receive your tithes, your offering, your whatever it is that you'd like to give, to this ministry to be a benefit to the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Well, Victory Word, it was another good night. I, I we could go longer. We could go longer, but I want you to be, I want you to be hungry and, and want this at, at our next Bible study. Amen. Part two. I love you. I love you. On behalf of myself, Lady T, AP Mark Oliver. And the entire staff here at the Victory Word Church, we love you. We look forward to seeing you this coming Sunday, second Sunday, here in the temple. Amen. Amen. Well, we'll see you. There's victory in the word, and we are living our future now. God bless you. See you next week.